The World Bowling Tour Women's Division Finals. Coming up, championship match. The number two seed, Danielle McEwen, will face the number one points earner, Kelly Kulik. Kelly Kulik, back-to-back -back winners of this event, seeking a third consecutive win. She's been really great in this event. She knows how to beat the guys, too. The only woman to win a PBA Tour title and a major at the Tournament of Champions, Kulik has been the best in the world for the last two years. And she stands by with Kimberly Pressler. Thanks, Mike. So, uh, Kelly, you know what? This is your third time that you are up here. But you have said in the past year and a past that you've had distractions, but you're coming in as the number one seed. So how is it that you've maintained your focus, even with all the distractions? You know, when I'm on the lanes, my job is to perform. Uh, I have to let the outside distractions just be there on the outside. And when I'm in the building, it's me against the pins. So I'm really going to focus on what got me here, my skills, me winning a few events, and uh, just let my game shine the way it knows how to. All right. Well, thank you so much, and good luck today. Thank you. Guys? Thanks, Kimberly. Our championship match is being conducted using world scoring, the world bowling to a world scoring format. 10 frame match, 300 is still possible. You earn 30 pins per strike. A spare will get you 10 plus the pin follow the first shot. Open frame is pin fall for the frame. 10 times 30 is still 300 for a perfect game, requiring 10 shots using world scoring. Now Danielle McEwen, as directed by the number one seed, will begin on the left lane. And a strike and 30 pin world score for Danielle McEwen in the first. Danielle becoming just the ninth woman in PBA history to win a PBA regional title. She did that in 2015 at South Point in Las Vegas. Kelly Kulik, 38, 12-time pro, nine pro titles, and two-time defending world bowling tour champion. Opening shot in this championship match. 30 pin strike using world score. And we've got an even match. Talk about a solid game. Kelly's always worked very diligently on mechanics and, and being in position. And she creates a lot of really good positions with her timing, uh, her arm swing, her hand, getting her left hip out of the way so she can swing the ball underneath her right shoulder. Consistent performances on the World Bowling Tour. His number one seed, and the landing was rough, but the pitfall is good. Yeah. She looked like she stuck just a little bit and kind of tugged it and thumbed it down, and the lanes have de developed in a way to where there's a little bit of hold left of target. Here she is sticking right there. You can see her hand kind of stay in the ball a little bit longer than normal, but because she has such a great arm swing, she's able to direct the ball online. You would like to pin. And the first time she misses the pocket in a game and a couple of frames. You know, when you bowl somebody like Kelly Kulik, that's got to create a little bit of anxiety and tension for anyone. McEwen watched these World Bowling Tour shows and wanted to get out and compete around the world and earn the points necessary, and uh, now getting a chance to face uh, what, who many people consider to be the greatest uh, lady ever to throw a bowling ball in this generation, Kelly Kulik. And speaking of generations, McEwen has the youthful generation taking advantages of these opportunities to compete, not only in the United States, but all across the globe. Well, Danielle also travels the world with boyfriend and tour player Marshall Kent, which is huge. I mean, and she told us both. What a great help he's been for her bowling and her career. And, you know, the two of them traveling the world together. Talk about, talk about a perfect match. A match made in a bowling center. Marshall Kent and Danielle McEwen, uh, men's and women's winners in this past year's 
USA Team Trials. Now Kelly Kulik, 60 pin world score, third frame, can add 30 to it with another strike. 10 pin. 10 pin plus bear would net 19 and an even match. Flat 10. Watch the six pin. So we'll take another look at her hitting the foul line. Six pin, second to the right, just go to the sidewall and lay DOA into the right gutter. World score, 9 plus 10, 19, 79 apiece. In addition to Kelly Kulik's great physical game, as we look at her accomplishments, two-time World Bowling Tour champion, defeating Liz Johnson last year, Missy Park in the year before, five career women's majors. And what makes Kelly so great is, in addition to her great physical game, Randy, is her mental attitude. Her, to her, being great means never being satisfied. Yeah, and, and I think one of the great accomplishments also is she was featured in ESPN the magazine The Body Issue in 2011. She worked out so much in advance of that photo shoot, and you can still see that photo shoot online. And very gutsy thing to do, as that has become such an important spread each and every year. I still can't believe they didn't ask me. I would have bought a copy. That's weird. <laughs> 7 and 10 go down. 109 pin world score for Kulik under the world scoring format. McEwen must have a strike for 30 pins to even up the match. And mark it. 109 at 109 through four. Next Sunday, the Stars turn out in forces. Nine-time NBA All-Star Chris Paul hosts the 2016 Chris Paul PBA Celebrity Invitational. Among those scheduled to appear, Terrell Owens, Hope Solo, C.J. Anderson for the Super Bowl champion, Denver Broncos next Sunday at 1 Eastern on ESPN. Any idea what kind of game C.J. Anderson has? I've heard it's, uh, it's on par with Nelly. Really? It's that good. Because Nelly's got game. Yes, yes, yes. How about that message, sir? Great fall for Danielle McEwen. Lending to our Barbasol close shave of the day. Head pin goes to the sidewall, gets misdirected. You don't see a messenger like that very often. Pretty cool. Danielle McEwen now with a three-bagger. Another week 10 on the right lane. A little softer speed or a little more hit at the bottom so Kelly can get the ball to face the 1-3 at a little better angle and she'll carry that 10 pin. The holy grail of the mental game, Randy. Kelly always working not to try to be perfect because that can take away from what you do best at times. I'll tell you, the key to the mental game is figuring out a way to get into the right place so that your body will perform the way you've trained it to perform. And Kelly Kulik's one of the greatest ever at doing that. So we take a look at her arsenal throwing an alpha crux. World score format, 30 for a strike, 10 plus count for a spare, count only on an open frame as Kelly Kulik Trails by 11 under world scoring, sixth frame. And another 10 pin. I like that one. That ball much straighter up the lane, a little less I like that one. ground covered, and it looked like it laid in the oil a little bit too long. This is a ringing 10. The six is going to go around. A second pin from the right, boom, right around the 10 pin. Right now, a lot of frustration for Kelly. She likes what she's doing physically, but the ball is not going through the pins the way she wants it to. It's always a sign when you're hitting the pocket and you're not carrying all 10, bowling ball is not going through the pins the right way. Nineteen pin frame for Kulik in the six, 147 on the world score. 
Danielle McEwen looking to outlast Kelly Kulik and claim the World Bowling Tour Championship. The rest of our championship is coming. Welcome back to Woodland Bowl. Many consider Woodland the Yankee Stadium of bowling. Great support over the years. Kelly Kulik seeking her third straight. As we look at the speed and revs of Kelly Kulik. So this is regular speed as your bowling ball. It takes about 2.5 seconds to get down the lane. Now, in slow-mo, we can actually count the revolutions. So 14 revs in two and a half seconds over 60 feet. So her miles per hour is calculated at just a little over 16 miles an hour. Her RPM's at 336. On the women's tour, that's a middle, kind of a medium to high rev rate range. Kelly Kulik is a player on the ladies tour who can actually get in and open up the lane because of her ball speed and her rev rate. And we'll take a look at Jason Belmonte and his statistics in our men's division. Rest of our championship match in world scoring. McEwen can earn 30 with a strike, sixth strike. Didn't like it, and a four pin. Toughest shots are always the ones out of commercial break, and Danielle McEwen didn't like this shot as it, it's a little left of target, not a terrible shot by any means, just a little bit high leaving the four pin. McEwen earns a world score of 19 in the frame. 158, 147 complete world score and an 11 pin advantage for Danielle McEwen looking to unseat Kelly Kulik, the two-time women's world bowling tour champion. Kelly Kulik, two-time pass winner. Carolyn Doran Ballard winning the first. Missy Parkin back in 2012. Mika Koavuniemi, two-time winner. Mika is now semi-retired, coaching for the United Arab. Pin falls for McEwen, 30 for the frame. Well, this looked like it was going to be a ringing 10. And watch, six pin goes around the 10, and the head of that pin catches enough of the 10 pin to take it out. Danielle likes that one. Kulik, seventh frame. Thirty pin strike, 188, 177, and Kulik trails by 11. Coming up next, it's the World Bowling Tour Men's Finals. Top seed England's Dom Barrett, the Australian Jason Belmonte, and the American Mike Fagan in the opening match, Fagan Belmonte. World Bowling Tour Men's Finals coming up next. Under the world scoring system, 30 for a strike, 10 plus pinfall for a spare, open frame, you take what you get, eighth frame for Kulik. And only one ball in the 10th frame. No fill ball in the 10th. Head down, Kulik ball crosses, and a 10 pin. Better than what they were. She's struggling with the approach on that left lane, and this is the full Yankee to the left of target. Crosses over, barely catches a piece of the head pin, leaving the 10. And that was the shot that she really wanted and really needed. Plus 10 for the spare, world score of 19 in the eighth for Kulik. Brings her to 196. Danielle McEwen has enjoyed traveling to Japan and Thailand and Qatar. She really enjoys the Middle East. And what an opportunity for those on the World Bowling Tour to not only compete at the highest level, but to see some of the great sights around the globe. Eighth frame. Ten. Another soft 10 on the right lane. 
seems to be a common theme. Beautiful arm swing, hand underneath it. She liked it. Just a little soft entering the pocket. McEwen, a member of the winning team, including Anthony Pepe, Matt McNeil, Matt O'Grady, and Alex Cavagnero at the inaugural PBA Team Challenge as a part of the PBA Fall Classic in Las Vegas. Women's competition, PBA regional winner, PWBA tour champion. Support of Susan Verano, Danielle's mom. Foundation frame for McEwen. 30 pins, world score, 237 through nine. Contrast to Liz Johnson, who looks at basically at the foul line when she lets go of it. Look how far down the lane Danielle McEwen targets. What a great result there. Beautiful shot. Max score Kelly Kulik, 256. Max score Danielle McEwen, 267. In the nose, three, six, and the ten. Fighting it now. Sometimes, as a professional, you struggle with the approaches and it gets in your head mentally. Well, left of target. You'd, you'd have to pump some extra STP in the middle part of the lane for that one to hold line. Seven and 10 for the spare. 17 world score in the ninth frame for Kulik. Will bring her to 213. Max score 243 with a strike. McEwen will need just seven pins to claim the World Bowling Tour Women's Championship. Yet to come, our men's division World Bowling Tour three player stepladder final. Pin 10th frame, 243, final score for Kelly Kulik. The great players are never satisfied, and I promise you, Kelly Kulik, not happy right now. Danielle McEwen watched the very first World Bowling Tour shows. She made it a goal to compete around the world and earn the points necessary to be here, and now on the verge of claiming the championship over Kelly Kulik, 10th frame. It's a wow. winner on a solid eight. Well, I promise you, nobody's surprised that Danielle McEwen won this. She is a superstar on the rise and one of the best female bowlers in the world. And now the best. Women's champion, Danielle McEwen. Kimberly will talk with Danielle after the break. And still to come, Australia's Jason Belmonte and the return of Mike Fagan kick off the WBT Men's Final. Danielle McEwen claims the World Bowling Tour Women's Championship. Yeah, in a great break right there, rolling that 10 pin. But she caught fire early with a three bagger beginning of that match. And it was all Danielle late. Kelly Kulik struggling on the left lane with the approach. And Danielle McEwen captures this title for the first time. Kimberly Pressler is lane side with our champion. Thanks, guys. And Danielle, I see that you're very excited down here for good cause, too. You know, when we talked earlier, you said that two years ago you saw the WBT championships on TV 
and you made a mental note that you were going to be here. Not only are you here, but you just beat the defending champion. What's running through your mind? Um, it's absolutely unbelievable thrill. Like I said, it was just my goal to make it to this point, to be the top three in the world, to make it onto this show and to come out the winner. And against Kelly and Liz, the best women's bowlers out there, it's amazing. Well, let's talk about the fact that they are two of the best women's bowlers in the world. You said earlier they helped pave the way for women bowlers, including yourself. What does it mean to you that you actually beat both of them to take this today? It means a lot. I mean, they've really driven me my entire career to just try to follow in their footsteps and hopefully catch up to them. And I just hope that I can do the same as far as the next generation coming up. I hope people look up to me and say, that's where I want to go one day, and this is their dream to make it here one day. <laughs> and I have no doubt that they will. And congratulations on winning the WBT championship. You've earned it. Thank you. <laughs> Our Ebonite flashback takes us back to the inaugural World Bowling Tour Finals in 2011 in Las Vegas. Carolyn Dorn Ballard won the women's event with a 207 162 final match over Sweet and Sandra Anderson. CDB just seriously flexing her muscles in that match. Mika Koivu Niemi won the men's side by defeating Sean Rash 237 224 in the final match. Sean Rash having some trouble. A couple of open frames helped Mika Koivu Niemi to victory. Coming up next, it's our men's division three-player step ladder featuring Mike Fagan, and we've not seen Mike Fagan in uh, quite a while. Somebody said he's hitting the books. He is hitting the books. In fact, he's in pursuit of his MBA at Cal Berkeley, and that is a pretty esteemed program as the master of Faganomics taking uh, his strike ball in the classroom. You know, I really miss him out here. He was one of our stars, but you know what they say, Mike, everybody loves the smart guy. Everybody loves the smart guy. Mike Fagan modeled his game after Pete Weber. And as we go to break, enjoy this promo feature of a 30 for 30 short, the bad boy of bowling, featuring our own Pete Weber. Coming up, we're bowling with Pete Weber. I think the best way to describe Pete Weber is controlled chaos. You know that the guy's going to just absolutely erupt. Pete Weber changed the game as we know it. He made bowling watchable. The ratings for bowling are beating the ratings for hockey. Well, have you seen this guy, Pete Weber? Have you seen? Do we have tape on this? Do we have this guy? Watch this guy. There's no Pete Weber. I, I don't even know if there's bowling. I don't call myself the best in the world because I suck. Every sport needs a bad guy. And every sport needs a hero. And I just so happen to like to play the role of the villain.